Hi, I'm Matt with the Chekhov team here at Prisma Cloud, and I want to walk through some of the awesome uh, updates and features and changes that the Chekhov team have been working hard on to deliver Chekhov 2.0. So you'll see here I have uh, Chekhov 2 installed, and on the outside, not that much looks different, and that's by design. It's as backwards compatible as possible all the normal CLI options, all of the output formats, um, all the integrations, for example, with VS Code, which allow us to, um, you know, live highlight any issues in Terraform or any other um, IAC uh, formats is, is all still there. As you can see, we've got uh, our TerraGoat training repo checked out here, which is highlighting we have some issues with a, a known uh, vulnerable bucket. So all that's good there. Um, all the bridge crew integrations as well for API keys and things like that all still works. Um, we start noticing some of the differences when we start listing the checks. The first thing you will notice is there's a lot more checks. We've added a load of checks for varying cloud providers, a load more Kubernetes checks against the CIS 1.6 guidelines. Uh, and just in general, we have a lot more coverage across the board uh, with the release of Chekhov 2.0. So some of those checks are checks that you will recognize if you've ever kind of written a custom check or uh, contributed back to Chekhov, you'll recognize the CKV underscore style check names, and they are written in Python, including the, the new ones. But then you will also notice some CKV2 style checks. And you'll see I've got one showing up here in my uh, kind of demo environment, but we're adding lots and lots more uh, up to the release date. This has been recorded a couple of days beforehand uh, on Thursday. So Chekhov2 style checks are written in a new format, a YAML format, and they're based on a graph database, which is embedded into Chekhov 2 and is kind of one of the most powerful changes uh, behind the scenes in Chekhov 2. What that graph database allows us to do is to start writing checks that query the connections and adjacencies between objects rather than just uh, an individual object. So for example, let's take a, an AWS EC2 instance. We cannot query that EC2 instance with a regular Chekhov check to find out if it's exposed to the internet because being exposed to the internet relies on a lot of other objects that might be connected to that EC2 instance. It might be in a VPC that has a NAT gateway, which is inbound forwarding uh, a port from that NAT gateway. It might be connected to an elastic load balancer. It might be connected to um, some kind of public internet connectivity uh, via BGP and might have a root table that directly exposes an IP address on that machine directly to the internet. All of those things, and we have security groups and network uh, policies in the mix as well, could define whether or not that uh, EC2 instance is public. And the graph database allows us to ask those kind of questions. Ask those kind of, is this connected via this? And is this resource over here connected to something that has these options set? So we can start asking much more complex queries um, of our resources. We'll jump into the code and have a look at one of those checks in just a minute. Uh, but for Kubernetes and container fans, um, we should also take a quick look at some of the outputs. So I'm using the um, Kubernetes GOAT uh, repo at the moment as a great training resource. Uh, definitely go and check it out here. And we're going to use that and run that against Chekhov. And those that have tried this before will notice some new output. So not only do we have a lot of checks, uh, and you'll see as you scroll up through these, the new checks for CIS 1.6 have been added in there. But what you're also going to see is that for any Docker file, um, we're starting to output Docker file scanning. So we have six policies by default covering some kind of sane Docker defaults, not exposing port 22, uh, making sure that we have health checks, making sure that we're kind of pulling uh, sensibly named tags and things like that. So any Docker file we find, uh, they will be enabled by default. And so that will be a, a noticeable change in Chekhov 2 as well. Jumping into these graph checks that we're really excited about, 
And you can find more information at the documentation link below on how to write them, what operators are available. But let's just jump in and have a look at the sample uh, I was just showing in the list output there. So contributors to Chekhov uh, will find it all in very sensible places. So within our Chekhov repo here, uh, we have all the regular um, infrastructure as code formats. We also have the Docker file scanning and Helm scanning that came in the, the 1.8 release. And then within here, under Terraform, because we have currently implemented the graph for Terraform, we will find we have in checks, we will have some new graph checks here. It takes the same format for the cloud providers. And here you will find our new graph checks. And as you will see, adding more and more and more um, of these new style checks. And as you can see, they're written in YAML, as I said, and let's take a look at this simple one. It allows us to ask questions across multiple resource types and how that resource relates to other types. So if you picture, um, for example, a Terraform graph output when you can ask the Terraform command to produce that like pi uh, viz style dot output showing all the interconnections between those, you can ask questions along any of those adjacencies to find what you're looking for. So here, for example, we are interested in an output of resource types. Um, so the, the thing we care about is the state of the, in this case, an EMR cluster, but we want to look at the connected security groups. So what we're basically doing is saying, is there a connection to a security group? Does that security group have um, you know, public access to the IPv4 internet? And if it does, um, we're going to fail that check. Let's have a look here. Um, let's make sure that all EC2 instances belong to a VPC. So again, the thing we care about, the thing we want to report on is the state of the instance itself, the, the EC2 instance. But we need to look through at network interface resources um, to see if that is the case. So for each network interface resource, we are checking there is a connection and that there is a VPC ID from any interface connected to that AWS instance. Um, and if we don't have a VPC ID, um, again, we fail the check. So again, you can see that these are quite simple to write. They're quite a simple definition language uh, with multiple operators such as exist, doesn't exist, all that kind of stuff. Uh, do check the documentation on what we support or reach out to us on Slack. Uh, in our codified security Slack at slack.bridgecrew.io. Uh, happy to help out writing some checks, uh, getting started with these checks. Anything else you want to see in kind of video format, let us know. Um, and we hope you find the new version of Chekhov useful. Happy scanning.